Hi, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the different settings and options that you have to change how your physical controller movement translates into virtual game movement. Let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I need to do is load up the Arm Swinger example scene that's included with the Unity Asset Store version of Arm Swinger. So it's under Assets, Arm Swinger, and then Examples, and I'll just load up the test scene now. This is the same test scene that you've seen me use in other videos. Uh, it has a bunch of different obstacles that you can use, like stairs. There's an interior section. There are several different ramps of different uh, uh, slopes. Uh, there's a plateau area that has some uh, height elevation changes. So this is a good playground to kind of test out your settings and see what feels best. Uh, it also includes the wall of settings, which has some of the more major arm swinger settings uh, available for you to tweak in game using your controllers. So that's uh, pretty handy as well. Okay, let's take a look at your camera rig. And we'll look at the arm swinger script. All right, so the settings that we're looking at here are all the ones that start with arm swing. Uh, one of the cool features of Arm Swinger is that everything is tooltip enabled. So if you hover over any of these settings, you'll get a tooltip that says what the setting is, uh, some basics about how it works, and then the default. This is some of the same information you can find on the GitHub README. The GitHub README is a little more verbose and has a little more background information, but this should at least steer you in the right direction as far as knowing what a setting does. Okay, the very first setting is arm swing navigation, and this enables or disables the arm swinging portion of arm swinger. Uh, in theory, you could absolutely use arm swinger just as a rewind and pushback engine, where all you were having it do is height adjust, uh, rewind when you get too close to a wall, or when you try and climb something, you don't have to use the arm swing part. Uh, the prevention stuff is totally uh, independent, works without arm swinging being enabled. So if you just want it for the prevention methods, absolutely you can disable arm swing navigation here. Next, let's take a look at the arm swing modes. So there are five modes and they're done in the pattern, how you activate arm swinger and then how movement is done. So both grips, both controllers means that in order to activate arm swinger, I pull both grips and then I steer and create movement with both of my controllers at the same time. Uh, the next option, uh, left grip, both controllers means that I pull my left grip and then both of my controllers become active as far as steering and, uh, and creating motion uh, for my player. Uh, right grip both controllers is the same thing with the right grip. The fourth one is my favorite and is actually default. That's one grip, same controller. And what that means is that either controller can be activated for arm swinging uh, at any time, or both can be activated at the same time. So if I squeeze the left grip, only the left grip is used for arm swinging. If I squeeze just the right grip, only the right grip is used for arm swinging. And if I squeeze both grips, they're both used for arm swinging. We can also do some cool stuff with the, the, the both controllers and single controller coefficient that we'll look at here in just a second to either buff or nerf your speed based on whether you're using one controller or two. One grip, same controller exclusive is the last option. And it's just like one grip, same controller, except both controllers is not an option. If you activate the left controller and are arm swinging with it, your right grip button doesn't do anything until you've let go of the left hand and squeezed with the right. We're actually gonna go slightly out of order here so that the movement curve makes a little more sense. So let's look first at max speed, arm swing max speed. So this is the fastest that your player can move artificially through the world. Um, so it's actually moving the camera rig when you arm swing. So your entire play space is basically gliding across the terrain. Then there's arm swing controller speed for max speed. This actually determines how many local units my hands need to move, my controllers need to move, in order to achieve max speed. So if my controllers are moving at a rate of three local units per second, uh, I will be going at the max speed of eight times the coefficient. This makes it easier or harder for you to go that max speed. Although it's not necessarily linear, that's where the movement curve comes in. So the arm swing controller to movement curve helps determine where along that curve motion actually happens based on how fast your controllers are going. So all the way here on the left is no controller movement. Arm swinger is active, but there's no controller movement. All the way over here on the right is arm swinger is active and the controllers are moving at controller speed for max speed, and that would be eight. So we have one through eight for speed is what we're calculating here. The curve in between determines when your controllers are moving, how much, actu how much virtual movement that, that 
that physical movement should turn into. So for instance, I can use this to do some cool stuff where if I'm moving my hand slowly, I have a lot more control, things are slower, I have very fine grain control over my movement. Whereas if I start to move my hands in larger motions and start to move them faster, I can still ramp up to max speed without feeling like I have to move too fast in order to do that. Feel free to mess with this and, and, and adjust it to what feels good for your game. Last, let's look at the arm swing, both controllers coefficient and the single controller coefficient. Uh, these are actually applied after that movement curve is used. So it, say you're moving your controllers at, uh, at, three, at three, uh, three local units per second, you will be going a max speed of eight in that case, times this coefficient. So if you're using both controllers, it's just times one. So the way I have it set up now is that you'll be going eight. If you only use a single controller though, and you're going the same speed with that single controller, I'm actually reducing your speed. So this allows me to simulate uh, someone doing more than one thing at a time where you're arm swinging with your left and shooting with your right. Uh, it means that you can do that without going full speed. So your player has to make a choice of whether they want to go faster or whether they want to be able to shoot and run at the same time or do something else at the same time. Uh, this provides you a lot of flexibility to be able to tweak the game how you want it to feel and encourage or discourage uh, players from using uh, only one controller. That's really all there is for the arm swing settings. Uh, hopefully you can tweak this to something that feels right for your game. I will see you in the next video.